What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu on PC using Windows 11. And the controller I'm going to be using is a Power A Nintendo Switch Pro controller. Let's get into it. Okay guys, let's go ahead and head on over to yuzumu.org. Link to this page is in the description below. Once you're here, go ahead and click on download. Now Yuzu requires the latest version of Microsoft Visual C++. If you're not sure if your PC already has this, then go ahead and download it here. And the Yuzu emulator is available to download for Windows and Linux. So we're gonna go ahead and click up here in the top right, download for Windows X64. Now on my desktop, I have the Yuzu installer, my firmware, and my keys. Now I'm sorry guys, I cannot tell you where to get the firmware and the keys. Let's go ahead and open that Yuzu installer. Now you have an option to install Yuzu Early Access, or you can install the standard version of Yuzu. If you decide to go with Yuzu Early Access, it will cost you $5 per month. But for this video, we're just going to be sticking with the stable version of Yuzu. Install. Yuzu is now installed, exit and launch Yuzu. Now when you first launch Yuzu, it's gonna say encryption keys are missing, but don't worry about this because we're gonna install our keys, okay? Anonymous data is collected to help improve Yuzu. Would you like to share this? It's your choice, I'm gonna choose no. Now the first thing we're gonna do is add our keys to the emulator. So let's go up to file, open Yuzu folder, and you should see a folder in here called keys. If you do not see a folder called keys, go ahead and create a new folder and call it keys. Let's open that folder. And now we're just gonna drag our product keys from our desktop and our title keys from our desktop into this folder. Go ahead and exit out. And now we're gonna install our updated firmware file that we also have on our desktop. So let's go back up to file, open Yuzu folder, we're going to go to NAND, System, Contents, and Register. Now I'm going to open my firmware folder. And just to let you know, your firmware file will have to be extracted. And then you will not move that extracted folder into this folder. Instead, you're going to open the extracted folder. And you're going to highlight everything that's in the folder. And you're going to drag it all into the emulator folder. Now we can exit out. Now let's go up to emulation, configure. Now in the general settings, you'll see hotkeys. If you wanna know your options for your keyboard hotkeys, then go ahead and take a look at these. And then let's go down to graphics. Now I find that the API runs best when you leave it on Vulkan, and that runs best with an Nvidia card or an AMD card. And if you would like to increase or decrease the resolution, you can find that right here. You can go ahead and hit the drop down arrow. I'm gonna leave it at 1080p when docked. Everything else here, leave at default settings. Let's go over to advanced. Go ahead and leave everything at default settings here as well. Now, if you start playing some games with this emulator and it seems that your games are stuttering, then you may wanna come back to advanced graphic settings and turn your accuracy level from high to normal. But that's only if you encounter any issues while playing a game. Let's go down to controls. Now, as I showed you in the beginning of the video, I am using a Power A Pro Switch controller that is connected to my PC over Bluetooth. Make sure you are set on Pro Controller and not Joy-Cons. And then we're gonna come over to Input Device and I'm gonna select Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. And just like that, the emulator maps your controls out for you so you don't have to map your controls out. Now, if I move my joysticks, you can see them moving on screen. If I hit my buttons, you can see they light up red. So everything is working. If you wanna give this controller a profile name, then come over to New. Go ahead and name it. I'm just going to call it P1 and OK, and then save. Now, if you have a second controller you want to connect to this emulator, you can go over to player two. And now I have turned on my Xbox One controller. So under input device, I'm going to see Xbox One controller. And just like the Switch controller, the emulator automatically maps out your buttons, reversing the X button to be Y, A to be B, B to be A, and Y to be X. And if I move my buttons on my Xbox controller, as you see, everything is working here as well. And we can give this profile a name as well, new, and we'll call this P2, okay? Save, and we are done here, so let's come down to okay. 
Now let's load our games into the emulator. So right here where it says double click to add a new folder, go ahead and double click here. Locate wherever you have your Switch ROMs. In my case, I have mine on an external hard drive. Once you have them located, go ahead and select folder. And there we are, all of my Switch ROMs have loaded into the emulator. Now if any of your games have DLC or updates attached, then they will be uploaded as well. For an example, my Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze ROM also had update 1.02 and you will see your updates listed under add-ons. Now let's say you have a new update file that you wanna add to a particular game that you just downloaded. To do this, you will go up to file, install files to NAND, locate wherever you have that DLC or update file. So here I have an update for Tears of the Kingdom. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna hit install. Okay, now if we look down here, next to Tears of the Kingdom, you'll see update 1.1.2. Now to verify that update, all you wanna do is right click on the game, go to properties, and there it is, version 1.1.2 update. Now if you wanna disable this update, then go ahead and uncheck the box and hit okay. And then you will see a D in front of the update, meaning that update file is disabled. Now, if you have any DLC for your games, then you will upload your DLC the same way as you upload your updates. And one last thing before we load up a game, if you look at the very bottom of the emulator, you will either see docked or handheld. If it says handheld, then your games will run at a lower res, in my case, 720p. But if you change it to docked, it will run at the higher res, in my case, 1080p. It all depends on what resolution you chose in the configuration, but I recommend always running your games in docked mode. And now we can go ahead and load up a game. And to go full screen, you just hit F11 on your keyboard. Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. And if you need any additional help and want to see my exclusive videos on this emulator plus more, then join my Patreon. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.